Hi there. Thanks for stopping by. It's time once again for Tired Old Queen at the Movies, starring the one and only Steve Hayes. Let's go see Steve. Oh, Johnny! Ooh, let's go! Johnny, we hadn't done a Joan Crawford movie in a while, so I chose 1950's The Damn Don't Cry, starring Joan Crawford, David Bryan, Steve Cochran, Richard Egan, Kent Smith, Selena Royal, and Jacqueline DeWitt. Now, this movie was sort of based on Bugsy Siegel and Virginia Hill. Joan, with Mildred Pierce, successfully put together two different genres, the woman's picture and the film noir, and had been such a success that every movie that she made at Warner Brothers after that was a little bit of a combination. Oh, I know how you feel. You're a nice guy. But the world isn't for nice guys. You gotta kick and punch and belt your way up, because nobody's gonna give you a lift. This one, she starts out as a woman from the wrong side of the track. She's married to Richard Egan. He works in the oil wells. He's a driller, and she's got a little boy. They can't afford squat. You know, the kid can't afford anything. She feels guilty about how poor they are all the time. We can't always have what we want. Can we, Tony? And the husband, all he wants to do is save up for his life insurance. And she said, you gotta give the kid a little something once in a while. And he goes, no. And she's not really in love with him. Well, the kid is killed. Hey, look out! Tommy! And she's horrified by it, and she just leaves. She says to her husband and her mother and father who live with them, I would have left a long time ago. I only stayed because of the kid, and I've got to make something out of my life. She'll find out what it's like. Whatever it's like, it'll be better than this. I want something more than what I've had out of life. And I'm gonna get it. So she goes to the city and she gets a job as a cigarette girl in this building. And there's all sorts of different things. There's a fashion house in the building. Well, the guy who's in the head of the fashion house, he gets her job as a walking model. And that's where she meets Jacqueline DeWitt. Now, Jacqueline DeWitt is really great. She's a kind of a gum-chewing woman. She's the woman who plays Mona Plash, the town gossip, and all that heaven allows with Jane Wyman and Rock Hudson. She's the big gossip in town. And she was a great little character actress. She specialized in kind of... Listen, hon, you gotta stop being antisocial. All this living by yourself that's for channel swimmers now just hang on to me tonight and you'll have a great time and at retail prices so she starts getting Joan uh, to go out with clients you know and they do whatever they have to do to make a little bit of extra money also on the same floor is a CPA played by Ken Smith who's sort of a mousy guy he sees Joan walking around he gets his eyes on her and she says how much do you make doing this and he says well I make about a hundred a thing she goes are you kidding that's what's giving you those headaches Skip a meal, you gotta take an aspirin. Too many aspirins, you got an ulcer. Then the first thing you know, you gotta have an operation. You can't work, you're flat on your back and your company goes to pot. Then where are you? Dead. Well, I never thought of it quite that way. Think of it. So she gets him in with this club owner because he takes her to a club and he can't afford to pay the bill. So she says, you know, you need a CPA. He's a CPA. Is that so? You need a certified public accountant. Take this guy. He's really good. Well, so he does. Well, it turns out that this guy is part of a big numbers racket. Now you listen to me, you stupid show off. You're going to do as you're told. So the next thing, he is introduced to David Bryan, who's the head of this whole syndicate who's running this numbers racket all over Vegas, all over the place. And Joan Crawford sees him and takes one look at him and says, that's the guy I gotta be with. So she dumps the CPA and she picks up with him. She goes and sees him in his office. It's this great scene and she's wearing this hat. And he says, uh, well, I guess I should have called you into the business meeting instead of your friend at the CPA. And she says, well, I guess you should. What kind of perfume are you using? Temptation. Yes, I suppose it is in some quarters. Now, you were about to say? I know an insult when I see one. He says, no, you don't. You wouldn't have shown up in that hat and that dress. <laughs> so, a well-dressed woman never wears anything that deflects a man's attention from her face. He says, I wonder if you're worth it. It might be worth more than you think. So they start this big torrid affair. Well, the CPA is insulted because Joan's throwing him over, but Joan doesn't care. She keeps on going. There's somebody else, isn't there? That's it, isn't it? Tell me. Yes. He's promised me the world, Marty, and I've got to have it. Well, he hires this woman, Selena Royal, great character actress. She was the woman who ran the Harvey Girls with Judy Garland. She was the head woman who, you know, brought the Harvey Girls into town. 
and she's a society woman who's who's has the, has the name and the prestige but doesn't have the cash anymore. So she introduces these guys in the syndicate and the mafia into high society and that's her job. So she's hired by David Bryan to give Joan Crawford class. Ethel Whitehead. I wonder if we couldn't find something a little more uh, provocative. Hmm? And Joan Crawford goes from being a woman named Ethel Whitehead to being an heiress named Lorna Hanson Forbes. Mrs. Forbes. Mrs. Lorna Hanson Forbes. Forbes. Oh, yes, of course. And she's the, in columns all over the place. Lorna Hanson Forbes is having a party. Lorna Hanson Forbes is back from Europe. What a wonderful evening was had with the supreme hostess, Lorna Hanson Forbes. What's happened to that system of yours, darling? I thought you always quit while you were still ahead. I've been experimenting with the new one. Stay to the bitter end. There's one guy in the syndicate, Steve Cochran. His reputation fits his name, Cochran. He's a really cocky guy. That's right, I'm fresh. But I'm also generous. And he is cute as hell. And he comes on to her, not knowing that she's his boss's girlfriend. You knocked the wind out of me just now, Mrs. Forbes. I'll be able to say thank you in a minute. And he and the boss, are, David Bryan, are like this. So David Bryan says to to Joan Crawford, look, I want you to go to Las Vegas, I want you to put the moves on him, and I want you to get everything that you can on him to set him up so I can take him down. Why bring me into it? Because my wife is incompetent for this job and you're not. I equipped you for it. Every step up the ladder, every Paris label, they can all pay off now. So the CPA, who's now also in, involved with the syndicate, comes to Joan Crawford and says, don't cross this guy. You do whatever you have to do. If you have to sleep with this guy, sleep with him. But you get the information and you get it back to him and you make it snappier, you're going to be in big trouble. You're going to help him get rid of Pretty. Get rid of him? You don't think George intends to let him live, do you? He's only been waiting until he had all the facts. And that's what you're going to get for him. There's a shootout, and there's a murder, and she's on the run. And I don't want to ruin the rest of it for you, but it's suspenseful and exciting. Joan really, really was great in this. In fact, I think Joan and a lot of people thought she was going to get nominated for this movie. She did two really great movies that year. She did this and uh, Harriet Craig, which was a remake of uh, Craig's Wife, uh, an old play by George Kelly that Rouse and Russell had done in the 30s. And she was terrific in both of them. She was at the top of her game. She was almost 50. She was still holding it together. She looks terrific. And, you know, she was a pro. You can't take your eyes off her. And, you know, you follow this. It has some, you know, twists and turns in the plot that are a little bit unrealistic. You're very thoughtful, but I don't care for orchids in the afternoon. But it's pure Crawford. You know, like I've always said about her, she puts these plots on and she sails. This was one of the last movies that she did at Warner Brothers before she her, left and her contract was up. And she had just about almost 10 years of really good work. And this one is one of her best. You're going to love Joan Crawford, David Bryan, Steve Cochran, Richard Egan, Selena Royal, and Jacqueline DeWitt in Vincent Sherman's The Damn Don't Cry. Let's all go to the and Selene Royal Let's all go as the, the beaver. <laughs> no. <laughs> Selene Royal? <laughs> <laughs> the can't be beat. 